Another common scenario where we need to use exponential functions is when we have something that is doubling every once in a while. So it takes a fixed time to double. Uh, one common example is a population. Populations, as long as there's nothing sort of uh, artificially limiting the growth of a population, populations tend to take a constant amount of time to double. For example, suppose we have a population of bacteria that starts with 100 cells and doubles every day. So let's find a, a formula for the population of this colony of bacteria after t days. Um, <clears throat> so you know, if we're starting with 100, after one day it's going to double, so that's times 2. But then after two days it's going to double again, so times another 2. So this is after two days. Well, after another day it's going to double again, so whoa, double times 2. So after three days, it's going to double again. You can see the number of twos here that I'm multiplying together is matching the number of days that I've waited. So if we wait t days, we will multiply by two t times. And that means that we're going to have <coughs> a 100 times. We're going to multiply by two t times, because we waited t days. So that's to the t. So you know, if we have something that's a doubling every once in a while, it's 2 to, right, the exponent here is the number of times we double. Now in this particular example, since we're doubling every day, the number of days and the number of times we double is the same thing. But that's not always the case. Uh, so for example, suppose we have a population of deer with 300 individuals that grows to 315 individuals after one year. How long will it be until the population doubles? Um, so <clears throat> uh, we have two data points here. At year zero, we have 300 individuals. And at year one, we have 315 individuals. So we could find an exponential, uh, an exponential function that goes through these two points and then use that function to figure out how long it takes until the population doubles. Uh, so our ex exponential uh, function is, let's call it p of t, and it'll look like uh, a, let's see, do I want to use b to the t or e to the kt? Either is fine. Let's use b to the t, I guess. So remember, we can plug in these data points. Uh, plugging in the first data point, we get 300 equals a b to the 0. So that's just a. So we know a already. Uh, plugging in the first data point, we get 315 equals a, which we already know is 300, times b to the first power. And that means that b is 315 over 300. So our population function is uh, 300 times 315 over 300. And you know, this, this fraction does reduce, so maybe I should, I should simplify that fraction. 315 over 300, that's 21 twentieths. So 21 over 20 times t. OK, so we want to know how long it will be until the population doubles. Well, that's going to be. 600, because we're starting with 300. So we want to know when is 600 equal to p of t. Right, we need to solve this equation. Uh, but uh, p of t is this formula here. So 300 times 21 over 20 to the t. So now we can divide both sides by 300. So we get 2 equals 21 over 20 to the t. Notice that this 2 here, this is a 2 because we asked for how long the population takes to double. If we wanted to know how long it took to triple, we just put a 3 here and so on. Um, OK. Uh, so how are we going to find this t? This t is in an exponent. And to solve an equation when the variable is in the exponent, you have to use a, a logarithm. So which logarithm should we use? Well, it seems like there's no nice choice. So let's just use natural log. So we get natural log 2 equals natural log of 21 over 20 to the t. But then we can move that t down in front. So we get t natural log 21 over 20. 
And so t is, looks like natural log 2 over natural log 21 over 20. And we can punch this into a calculator to get a decimal approximation. So natural log 2 divided by natural log, oh, okay, careful about my parentheses, natural log 2 divided by natural log 21 over 20. Close my parentheses. And I get 14.2, about. So about 14.2 years. All right. <clears throat> Now, if we, write, if we rewrite this function using uh, an exponential base e, so that's going to be 300 e to the, here it's going to be k times t. And remember, k is just the natural log of b. Right? So we know that b is 21 over 20. So let's take the natural log of 21 over 20. So this is 0 0.0488 times t. This number right here is called a growth rate. So sometimes in growth situations uh, you'll see, the, see this described as the population grows at 0 or at 4.88 uh, percent annually. But we have to actually be careful with this stating the growth rate this way. Um, because uh, this, the way that this is stated, it seems to say that um, after one year, the population will be 4.88% bigger. And that's actually not quite what this kind of growth rate is saying. So this kind of growth rate in an exponential is a very special kind of growth rate. It's called a continuous growth rate, or otherwise called an instantaneous growth rate. Right? So if this population is growing exponentially like this, um, the instantaneous rate is sort of, uh, you know, well, an average rate is going to be how long you wait, sorry, the, how much the change is, so the change in the population divided by the change in time. Right? But that's an average over a long period, over a year typically. But an instantaneous rate will be uh, the same ratio, but as this change in time gets smaller and smaller. Right? Instantaneous is implying that this delta t ought to be very, very tiny. So, um, uh, so when we say something like this, a population grows at 5% per year, we have to be careful about distinguishing whether this is genuinely 5% per year, in which case the exponential function would look like right, um, it, uh, 1 plus our 5%, so 0 0.05, right? So this would be a times 1.05 to the t. So this, every, every, every year that goes by, this will increase 5%. But if this is a continuous growth rate, then instead you put this 0.05 in an exponential like this, right? So, and these aren't going to give you the same thing. So, for example, for this formula, if we plug in t equals 1, we get 1.05 times a. If we plug t equals 1 into this formula, we get a times e to the 0 0.05. And if we just evaluate e to the 0 0.05, see, 0 0.05, raise e to that power, oops. We get a times 1.05127 and change. So you can see that it makes a little bit of difference whether this growth rate is a continuous growth rate or just a regular old annual growth rate. So you have to have to be pretty careful when you're talking about growth rates to um, look for some sort of context cue that will tell you if it's a continuous growth rate or an instantaneous growth rate. As an example, let's um, suppose that we have a, a population of 1,000 individuals that grows at a continuous rate of 4% per year. How long will it be until the population reaches 1,500? Well, since we have a continuous rate, we should definitely use uh, the exponential formula that has e in it, so e to the kt. Right, so this is going to be our population function. 
we know that a is really the initial value of the population, so a is 1,000. Okay? Also, since we know that this grows at a continuous rate of 4% per year, that's what k is, right? k is the continuous growth rate. But we have to write it as a decimal and not, uh, not a percentage, so it's going to be 0 0.04. Right. So these two pieces of information, the initial population and the continuous growth rate, immediately tell us that our population function is 1,000 times e to the 0.04t. And now, we can, now that we have this function, we can answer the question of when does it get to 1,500. We can just set this equal to 1,500. 1500 equals 1000 e to the 0.04 t, and then solve for t. So divide both sides by 1000. I think we're going to get 3 halves equals e to the 0.04 t, and then take natural log on both sides. Natural log 3 halves equals, on the right hand side, the natural log of this is just 0.04 t, and then divide by 0.04. So t is natural log of 3 halves over 0 0.04. And then it's calculator time. We can get a decimal approximation for this. So let's see, natural log of, uh, natural log of 3 halves divided by 0 0.04. And I get 10.14, approximately, years. All right, so in these sort of growth situations, be careful to. Uh, distinguish between continuous growth, a continuous annual growth rate and a, a regular annual growth rate because it makes a difference.